Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another formation vid where today we are reviewing the 42312 post patch. Now, in the last video, we obviously reviewed the 4411 and you guys absolutely loved it. And I am working on that counter um, formation tutorial where we're going to be doing the counters to each one of these individual formations. But to go along with it, I thought we would also review every single formation because this patch that has just come out is likely to be the last one. There may be one more patch that comes out. Typically, they don't patch the game in the new calendar year, so there may be one more patch, or this could possibly be the last patch. I, I, I'm expecting there'll probably be one more patch, um, but I still think even then, we're going to review pretty much every single formation and test it out and see how it is playing to go alongside those counter formations. So today we are going to go for the 4-2-3-1, which is always a massively popular formation. If you have any other formation you'd like us to do for review, make sure you drop it in the comment section and we will get around to doing all of them, of course. But starting off with the 4-2-3-1, obviously a massively popular formation. It's not a formation that I personally have used recently. There's a couple of other formations that I'm really enjoying at the moment, so I'm not using this 4-2-3-1. Also for me personally, I think the 4-2-3-1 narrows often suits me slightly better because what I dislike about this formation is I've often found before that the left and right midfielders, uh, which are Neymar and Grincher in this team, I've often found they don't get involved in the play. I've often found that they've got stuck out on the wings. And whilst it's always important to have width in FIFA, you also need to have players that will do things for you. You know, I often find when I use this formation, like they never score a lot of goals, they never really get a lot, a lot of assists. In this formation, the key players are your striker and your cam, because a lot of the time, um, pre-patch, you know, that's why I'm testing it out now, is that the, a lot of the time your striker and your cam would be the players that would score all your goals and get all your assists. So I want to test it out and see if these left and right midfielders do get involved in the play. And that's why I often opted for the 4-2-3-1 narrow, because instead of them being left and right mids, they were left and right cams. They got, got a lot more involved in the game, scored a lot more goals, and it was just a, a better formation. Now, this formation is a good formation. It's really solid. It's really compact. You can see back four, two CDMs, the left and right mid, the striker and the camp. It's a very solid, easy to use formation, in my opinion. And for me, it's one of those formations that on face value doesn't look like it has too many weaknesses. Um, but like all formations, every formation has a weakness and uh, it's definitely a formation that can be beaten. But it's definitely one of the better formations in the game, hence why a lot of people do use it even now. Um, it's a brilliant, brilliant formation. So going into the instructions now, as always, I always say to you guys, personnel is the key and is king when, you, when you're setting up any team. And your tactics and instructions can only take it so far, but you have to have the right players uh, and you have to play to the strengths of your players. Now, this formation, you can see, suits the players I've got perfectly. I've got good fullbacks. I've got two good CDMs with Nain Golan and, uh, and Alan, but I've also got good pace on the wings. I've got a really good cam and I've got a, a very good clinical quick striker. So this formation suits me perfectly. So going into the fullbacks, now I've actually decided to leave the fullbacks on balance because I found when playing the game, obviously the left and right midfielders um, aren't, some, aren't players that do get involved in the game too much. So I wanted to have something a little bit more attacking this time around because this is typically quite a defensive formation or it can be seen as quite a defensive formation or I, I don't think it's defensive I just think it's a very solid compact formation I often find when playing this formation it's a difficult one to break down that doesn't make it defensive it just means that it's tactically set up very well so I found that actually using the fullbacks overlapping the and the overlap is key overlapping the wingers um, often found that that was a much much better option going forwards it gave us a lot more attacks and you're gonna see that when we uh, when we what the instructions we put on the wingers, how effective this actually made it. So moving into the DMs, I actually decided to use Manmark for the DMs. I've been using Manmark um, recently. I've actually been finding it very very effective. Whilst cut passing lanes is very effective. Uh, for me personally, I'm not the best reader of passing lanes. I often find that I'm a much better person, a uh, much better player when I'm man mark. Um, I've personally found man mark more effective, but cut passing lanes is obviously very effective. It's whichever your preference is. Obviously, cover centre um, because we don't need to use cover wing because we've already got width out there with the wingers and the fullbacks are covering the wings. So, we, we you know, especially we've got two players out there, don't need to use cover wing, so cover that middle of the pitch and then stay back while attacking. This is important. In the last vid, I talked about um, using drop between defenders, uh, and I did use it in the 4-4-1-1, which has two central midfielders. Um, now, for me, in this formation, I don't think primarily using drop between defenders when you have two CDMs 
is effective because what's going to happen is that DM is going to drop in, in between your back four. So he's going to go in between Militao and Longley. And when you're using two CDMs, it, you can see the big hole that it's going to leave for Alan. And that, that gap is going to have to get covered by an Angola. And it's just too much ground to cover for one player. So in the last vid, we used, we used it but it was effective. I wouldn't necessarily say it's that effective in this formation. I think when you've got two CDMs, I don't think using one of them, unless you're gonna use both of them on drop between defenders and then your defense would be a back six, um, but then that would just make it super, super defensive and difficult to break down. So I don't think using drop between defenders when you've got two DMs is the best way to go. I actually think stay back while attacking for both of them is the best way to play. I don't think using drop between defenders is effective unless you've got one CDM I wouldn't use drop between defenders. Now the wingers are the most important uh, important players to get right in this formation and this is often for me been the make or break position in this team. It's if I can get the mid if I can get the wide midfielders in it was always a beastly formation and this was how I got the wide midfielders involved in the game and and how it made this formation so good. Now defensive support we left on basic because we've got the uh, the fullbacks on balance. I decided to leave the wingers on balance just to match it up and make it easy to use. In terms of chance creation, now we went for cut inside. Now this is the important, this was the thing that really changed it for me uh, and made this formation really good. And as I said at the beginning, I often found this formation was not the best formation because the wide players never got involved. Now to get the wide players involved, I used cut inside and I used cut inside because we had the fullbacks on overlap so the fullbacks are going to be dominating the outside of the pitch so we don't need to even have them on balance width we don't even need the wingers on balance width because that's going to mean sometimes they're going to be on the outside as well so now you're going to have a fullback and a wide midfielder on the outside and you might have all this space on the inside of the pitch but none of your two players are marked so i use the fullback on overlap so he's patrolling the width of the pitch. Now you could also you you could have it the other way. You could have the fullbacks on inverted runs, and you could have the uh, the the wide player on stay wide. You could do that as well. I personally found that having uh, having the wide player on uh, on cut inside was more effective because I want the more attacking player who's going to possibly cut inside and shoot or possibly play a key pass. I don't really want the fullback inverted because he might be the one that ends up taking a shot, and obviously I'm going to have more chance with Neymar scoring than Alex Tellers. So actually I found that putting them on cut inside made this formation super, super effective and I scored a lot more goals and that was how I got the wingers more involved in this formation while still being able to maintain the width. Now obviously the negative is that when you do turn over the ball because your fullbacks are, are going to be going forwards um, in some attacking phases, it's going to leave a couple of gaps out on the wing. But I think we've got plenty of defenders back, you know, we've got a back four, uh, our back two, sorry, with Militao, Longley, our two centre backs, and we've got those midfielders that can always we can drag them out manually ourselves to cover the space. So I think you would be okay a lot of the time. You know, obviously every now and again it will cost you, but it's a risk reward thing. I think more more times than not you're gonna you're gonna benefit from it than be hindered. Obviously having them on getting behind as well, wanting to stretch the defence. Obviously wanting them get involved more in the middle of the play, in the central part of the play. But obviously want them still making those darting runs in behind and support on crosses. Always got my wingers on getting to the box because I'm someone personally that obviously cutbacks are very effective in the game. So going down the wing with a fullback, with a winger and cutting it back in the middle of the box, sort of penalty spot. Sometimes back post, there's often a player that can be open that if you can drill it across the back post with a, with a low driven cross, you can find that player at the back post. So often having your wingers on getting to the box. If you're someone like me, I find that drilling the ball to the back of the post uh, with the drill cross is super effective. And if you don't have your winger set to get into the box, he won't be there to tap it in. So that's obviously a super effective tactic. So I use get into the box and then interceptions on normal. And we've got the exact same tactic set uh, for both wingers. The cam is obviously a very important player in this position as well, because naturally the, the two central players are the ones that score a lot of your goals primarily. And that's still the case. Obviously the two, the two central players score a lot of goals, but now we've obviously got the wingers more involved. However, for the cam, I actually decided to leave the defensive support on basic support on crosses. I went for stay on edge of the box because we've already got a few players in the box so I don't want to make it too cluttered I don't want too many players getting in the box so I don't want it to become too crowded um, so I'm gonna have the cam on stay on edge of the box and let him patrol the edge of the box and possibly look to hit some of those finesse shots in the corners and then moving up front to the striker uh, obviously I've got him on stay central we've got plenty of width in the team with Neymar with Garincha with our fullbacks 
So there's no need for us to be telling uh, Mbappe, even there's no need for him even to be on balanced width. And there's certainly no need for him to be on drift wide. So we want him staying central. And, and staying central is important because he's going to be doing most of his damage in the middle of the pitch, scoring his goals. You want him in the box. You don't want him drifting out wide. And obviously getting behind, utilising that massive pace that he's got. We've pretty much got the exact same instructions that we use for the 4-4-1-1. I think the thing that's key when it comes to, uh, to tactics, my mistake, the thing that is the key with the tactics is for me, I typically will use the same tactics for most formations. Uh, the thing about tactics is they're kind of quite linear, is that they will use that they will be utilised pretty much the same in any formation. And the thing about tactics, you, it's more a style of play that you're trying to implement. Now, my style of play obviously always depends on personnel because of the people that we've got in our team, because we've got Neymar, because we've got Garincha, because we've got Mbappe. Is always that's always kind of our front three, our spearhead of our attack. So obviously I'm always going to use long ball because long ball means obviously spacing behind um, and it's going to mean players always running in behind. So obviously you need to play to the strengths of your teams. If you're someone that has, you're playing the same formation, but if you had Coutinho as a left mid and Lewandowski as striker and let's say you had player of the month Serge Gnabry at, at the right wing, you wouldn't play offensive style because you haven't got the same sort of pace. Whilst you've got Gnabry who's quick, Lewandowski and Coutinho are not pacey players, so you wouldn't play long ball. So the tactics always depend on how what your what your play style is, how you're playing. And for me, these are the tactics that I find uh, suit my game and play style best, regardless of the formation that I'm playing. I'll always try and play in the same style. So my tactics typically, um, and your tactics should be the same. Typically, you know, whatever the formation you're using, they shouldn't really change. You know, unless you're someone that's trying to build a possession formation or a counter-attacking style then your tactics change but if you're just you know using the same tactics um, but a different formation then your tactics really should stay the same for every formation and these are my tactics I only use balance on defensive style I never use any sort of press because I'll manually press or use the team press on the d-pad um, you could use pressure on heavy touch that's the only press I would recommend but I typically will always recommend you guys to use balanced width wise I always stay pretty central uh, and pretty basic depth wise I like to play on six because I like to be slightly higher up the pitch just to kind of create a little bit of pressure in my opponent's face whilst it's going to leave a little bit of space in behind I've got quick defenders so I can always make up that space same with width players in the box will always keep standard on five because we've set them to the instructions and as I always say instructions are the key and you want to keep your instructions you want them to be the thing that's telling your players what to do um, and your instructions are the thing that override your tactics so you always want your instructions to rule and then corners and free kicks um, always three and one for me so my tactics stay the same my uh, my instructions are the thing that the most important thing with formations are your instructions and other personnel right for the formation and if all that's the same then you can build on your uh, your tactics and make sure your tactics fit your instructions and your personnel and your style of play and that's when you'll get the most out of the game and that's when you'll see the most uh, the best results but that is it for this formation review i think for me this formation is a absolute monster i think it's better in my opinion than when it was pre-patch i think this is absolutely 100 percent a meta formation and definitely a formation i would recommend you guys using if you're not using it already because it is a super popular formation something you should definitely at least give a try and uh, and give it a go and let us know how it goes in the comment section below if you do want to see any more formations let me know in the comment section do drop a thumbs up on the video if you did enjoy make sure hit that subscribe button as well if you are new to the channel and that's all for today guys have an awesome day i'm out